one of the things, so there have been studies linking protein and meat consumption to cancer incidence. And there was a really well done study published last year by Walter Longo's lab at UCLA. And uh, he's been doing a lot of research in this area. He's a very good scientist. He does, he always, you know, he does studies on humans that are correlative, so epidemiological mm-hmm. studies, but he backs them up with mouse data and then he goes into like cultured cells and he, teases apart all the mechanisms, you know, so he doesn't just make an association. He first makes the observation, he finds the correlation, and then he goes into the mouse model and he, you know, gives them a certain diet, he controls everything. Uh And then he goes and dives even further into all the biochemical and molecular pathways in different cultured cells. So, you know, which is why he always ends up getting like a really high impact scientific publication like Uh Nature or Science. So he's always publishing in those really high impact journals. So a study that he published um, last year was um, it, it was looking at I forgot the time frame, but it was you know people that were eating you know protein me and it looked at the you know how much they were eating and correlated it to their all cause mortality. So they're looking at cancer or they're looking at car- different cardiovascular mm-hmm. related diseases. I'm not sure they were looking at neurodegenerative disease, but they were definitely looking at those those two. Um, and they found that people that eaten you know eat more meat had a higher all-cause mortality. They had mm-hmm. more cardiovascular disease. They had more cancer. And that was the real main thing. They had more mm-hmm. cancer. Um, but it was a certain, you ha- it was people that were older, but not too old. So once mm-hmm. you got to a certain age, like above, I don't remember exactly, 55 or something like that, um, the opposite was true. So protein became more important. Mm-hmm. Um, protein intake was, was um, inversely correlated with mortality. So the higher the protein intake, the lower the all-cause mortality. And okay. I think that has a lot to do with uh, frailty, and you know, as you get older, you fall down and break a bone. You know, muscle mass is also a very important indicator of mm-hmm. all cause mortality. Not everyone that's vegan is training like you mm-hmm. is, you know, very aware of making sure they're maintaining the muscle mass and staying physically fit. So, so protein does become important as you're getting older because you don't want to break a hip and then it takes you out, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but what was interesting about this study is that they went into animal models and they, uh, gave animal models cancer. So they basically injected them with some tumor cells, various types of cancer, and then they gave them either high protein, low protein diet, and they looked at the tumor growth. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like feeding mice protein initiated cancer, which is a very different Mm -hmm. um, point. So there's something that initiates cancer and there's something that can then promote it to grow. And so IGF-1 is a growth factor that's it's important for muscle growth. It's important for you know neuronal cell survival. It's important to make new neurons. I mean, you want IGF one. Mm-hmm. You want it to repair damaged muscle. You want it to make new neurons. Uh, and when you're a kid, you want it to grow. Um, <clears throat> however, as you become older and you have uh, accumulated a lifetime of damaged cells, let's let's say you're eating a diet that's high in refined carbohydrates and sugars damaged cells, you're, you're eating a bunch of processed meat, mm-hmm. things that are causing DNA damage. Um, you don't want damaged cells to keep growing. You want them to die. Right. So the IGF-1 is really like throwing gasoline on the, on the fire. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it, it's all about the context. And so these mice that were given a high protein diet, the, the tumors grew faster. Duh. Their mm-hmm. IGF-1 was going up. IGF-1 is a major promoter of cancer. It can, it can allow cancer cells to grow and thrive and, and, when we have a damaged cell, our body knows it and our body goes, oh, wow, this is not good. If I don't kill this guy, it's going to potentially become cancer. So it kills it. Mm-hmm. But you know what IGF-1 does? IGF-1 comes over and it's like, oh, no, don't die. No, no, we're cool. Right. We're cool. Right. So it like overrides that whole inherent me- pathway that we have you know, in our bodies that are protective against getting cancer. So IGF-1 can be very bad, but it all depends on the person. So if you have someone that is you know, very... Uh, health conscientious, that's an omnivore, people that are not eating processed foods, refined carbohydrates, not eating a bunch of processed meats. They're, you know, they're eating their healthy meats um, and they're getting a lot of plants, a lot of, you know, micronutrients, they're exercising, they're doing all the right things to to minimize the amount of damage, to minimize their inflammation, Mm -hmm. they're getting enough fiber, all that stuff. Um, You know, IGF-1 is not as much of a problem for those people as it is for the person who is eating meat and all the other bullshit. Right, 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 right. Interesting. You know, so I think that something very important to keep in mind is the context. So when you've, when you've got these big headlines that come out, they say, eating meat causes cancer. 
Well, not exactly. Right. You know. <laughs> well, I think it's a yeah. I think it's hard to talk about this study and the press release. I mean, the internet exploded yesterday, right? right. Like with this news and and what's just as amazing as these scientific results in these studies is the conversation that's swirling around it, right? And and the sort of uh, participation of journalism in that dialogue. So we're in this clickbait culture. So there's this sort of you know commercial drive to create these sensational headlines that don't necessarily accurately reflect what the study actually says. I feel like you're like one of the few people who's actually qualified to pontificate on what these studies mean, actually, but most people aren't. You know, they're just gonna read the headline and they're gonna draw their conclusion and they're not gonna really get into it. And it's been interesting to watch kind of over the last 24 hours how, you know, these different camps are sort of, you know, solidifying their positions. So you have the like bacon-loving, right. low-carb people who are, you know, basically throwing the predictable, you know, barbs out there about how it's correlative and like blah, blah, blah. It doesn't mean anything. And which is sort of an argument you can make about any kind, most nutritional studies because that's the very nature of how they're done. Right. Um, and then I saw a funny, a headline on like a parody site said so something like in the way you know in the wake of the WHO press release uh, vegans 250% more likely to be you know snarky or yeah. something like that you know what i mean so it's like both sides can participate in this dance that's going on around it um, and of course you know it's not like eat a piece of bacon and you get cancer it's right. it's certainly not that um, but i think also to say to just dismiss it out of hand and say this is meaningless and 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 doesn't doesn't require us to even look at it and and is lacking merit is ridiculous as well. I mean, I think that this was a uh, a consortium of scientists that spanned not just the WHO but these other organizations over ten countries. I think they looked at eight hundred studies. Eight hundred studies. And you know that 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 dealt with many populations of people, um, and of course. You know, you can't control, they're, they're human beings, you can't control for every variable. It's impossible to do so. Um, and I think they even did try to control for certain cofactors, and that actually made the statistics less dramatic in doing so. And right. they still were able to come up with these correlative figures of, you know, what was it, 18% for every 50 grams of processed meat, more likely for, was it colon cancer, yeah, cool. colorectal cancer, 17% per 100 gram of red meat for a couple other, pancreatic cancer, I think a couple other ones, whatever. Um, so you can parse that out and, and draw from it what you will. But I think at the end of the day, like what I take away from it is saying, yeah, well, this is something that there's, there's clearly some risks associated with this and we need to like, you know, take a look at that. Yeah, I, I think you, you bring up some really important points, you know, one being obviously the problem with the sensational journalism, mm -hmm. which instigates this. But then there's the people that have their own belief and their view and they, you know, instead of thinking more like a scientist and going, okay, like, I want to understand what's really going on here. Mm -hmm. They're just like, no, I want to eat bacon or no, I want to eat tofu. You know, so it's like you get this war. Or they've been promoting a certain perspective right. for so long, so they're very invested in right. that. Right. That's a mm -hmm. big problem. That's you know, and that's, it's something that I, I, I really, that's something really, I, you know, I have to like, look at that as well. Right. right? Absolutely. I'm the vegan athlete guy. Yeah. So I go, well, what part of this is, where, where am I being dogmatic? And when am I, you know, I, it's important for me to be open-minded and to really, you know, use my intelligence to look at everything critically and objectively. Right. So, I mean, you have incentive to believe it, right? <clears throat> You're like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, of I course. Mean, but you know, like, you know, the snark doesn't get anyone anywhere. No, like it I'm doesn't. not participating doesn't. in that at all. Like, you that's, know? That's all. That's absolutely. And I true. think that, and I think the the headlines are inflammatory. They are. So they always are. And you know, it's, it's the same thing with butter is back. You know, and then yeah. you just flip sides on that one. Yeah. You know? we, I mean, we, we talk for like days so, on this. So, you know. <laughs> we talk for days, but I think the bottom line is is that there there are interesting um, there are interesting mechanisms going on here that scientists need to continue to explore. People, uh, the general public needs to be aware of, you know, possible correlations. And when you have something like with the nitrites and nitrosamines, and you know that these polycyclic, you know, carbonyl groups are formed when you have the heat and, you know, it's something to keep in mind, you know, to, 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 to go, okay, wait a minute. So if I'm damaging myself this way and I'm doing all this other stuff, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's not good. Right. 
So it's, it's, it's something that I think is important to just have in your, in your awareness. And for the scientist, you know, it's, it's time to go to work. We need to continue to, to look at this. Yeah. And I, you know, another thing to bear in mind is that there's a greater play going on in the sense that there's a lot of, you know, talk about vested interests, not just the people that adhere to a certain position nutritionally, but the just sheer economic forces behind all of this. So here we're dealing with, you know, relatively objective minded scientists who, you know, I'm sure there's some politics in there, of course, but um, it's not like they're being funded by, you know, the meat and dairy industry. And, you know, the amount of money, it's, what was the figure? It's something like 800 and, you know, the meat industry is like an $890 billion industry. Like they, you know, there's a lot of money to be made in this business. And, and when their bottom line is being threatened by studies like this, you know, I guarantee you that the, that, that, that um, there were a lot of backdoor sort of conversations that took place in this World Health Organization situation where they were being pressured probably, you know, with regard to what these statistics were going to be by politicians. And so the fact that they still came out and said this, I think, is very powerful. And you have to really understand that there's a gigantic system at play that, uh, that um, has a vested interest in in, in having people believe that certain foods that are unhealthy for you are indeed healthy. And so what we're seeing right now in many ways is very analogous to the tobacco industry and how they handled it. So the meat industry issues their press release. This is nonsense, blah, 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 blah. You know, they're sort of, you know, lining up their arguments to, um, refute all of this, uh, because it's a threat. It's a threat to their, their business, right? Yeah, of course. So. I, I haven't uh, kept up with that. I haven't seen what their response was, but I was curious. I was like, yeah. what, what, is, what are people working at? I mean, people working at Subway don't give a crap. But what are, what's, because that's all processed meat, right? That's like right. cold cuts. I mean, that's full of nitrites, mm-hmm. I, I think. I mean, I don't, maybe they have meat that's not, you can buy yeah. meat, but, but that to my, that was the first thing I thought of was all these like sandwich places that are right. serving all these processed meats. I was like, oh man, yeah, you must exactly. be freaking out right now. But you know what? This has been, I, I talked about this on, um, like a year ago on when I went on Joe Rogan's podcast, mm-hmm. talk about nitrites and processed meats and how it leads to nitrosamines and causes cancer. It's not like scientists have known about this. It's just now getting <laughs> out like, there. Like this like, is new. This right, is this not is like new. Breaking news. It's not. It's really not. It's, it's actually quite old. I think the point really ultimately, like, you know, it's important for me to say that, that, you know, I'm not here to tell anyone how to live their life. Like, I'm not here to say you should do this or do that, or you need to be vegan. It's like, that's not my business, right? I can share my experience. If that is interesting to people, I'm happy to talk about it. But ultimately, everybody needs to take responsibility for their own decisions about how they're going to live. And I think it's just in, like studies like this and kind of what's happening and the conversation that's occurring, the conversations that are occurring right now, just make it incumbent upon everybody to do their own research. Like, look into it. Read the study yourself. What is your conclusion? Don't just read the headline. You know, understand that, um, you know, there is a, a an avenue for you to expand your own horizons. And, you know, I don't, I mean, when we were kids, like there was no internet, you know, if you wanted to research something like this, that was like a, you're, you're like in the basement of some library looking at microfiche. And now you have (laughs) all of anything you want to know with 10 minutes on Google, you can find out all kinds of incredible information. So avail yourself of that resource and educate yourself. Yeah, as much as you can. Obviously, the it's 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 difficult to. There's a lot of bad information on Google.